subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Hi, welcome to Test Prep Training. Today we will discuss about, Google Cloud Certified Professional Data Engineer. A professional data engineer facilitates data-driven decision-making by collecting, transforming, and publishing data. Data engineer designs, operationalizes, secures, and monitors data processing systems with a particular emphasis on security, and compliance. Learning Objectives Some of the skills required to become a successful Google Cloud Platform Data Engineer are as follows. First, Professional Data Engineer Learning. Second, Proficiency in Python and SQL languages. Third, Understanding of Cloud Platforms. Fourth, Knowledge of Machine Learning Concepts. Fifth, Basic Concepts of Java and Scala Programming. Sixth, Knowledge of SQL and no SQL databases. Seventh, principles of data warehousing and data modeling. Prerequisites of the exam. Prerequisites forms a very essential part of any exam. Regarding the Google Cloud Certified Professional Data Engineer requirements, the following are the requirements. First, candidate should possess scalability and efficiency. Second, candidate should be able to design and monitor data processing systems with a particular emphasis on security. Third, above all, a data engineer should be able to leverage and continuously train pre-existing machine learning models. Now we will talk about exam details. Google Data Engineer Certification Exam comprises of 15 questions which are multiple select and multiple choice. You will be given two hours to complete the test and score 70% to get through the exam. Further, the exam is valid for two years and is available in two languages, English and Japanese. Above all, the exam costs $200 US dollars. Course Outline Google Cloud Professional Data Engineer Take a glance at the topics that needed to be covered for the exam, and you need to pay focus on. First, designing data processing systems. Second, building and operationalizing data processing systems. Third, operationalizing machine learning models. Fourth, ensuring solution quality. Let us now discuss about course outline topics in detail. Module 1, Designing Data Processing Systems. Number 1, Selecting the Appropriate Storage Technologies. It contains five subtopics which are. First, Mapping Storage Systems to Business Requirements. Second, Data Modeling. Third, Trade-offs Involving Latency, Throughput, Transactions. Fourth, Distributed Systems. Fifth, Schema Design. Number 2. Designing Data Pipelines. It contains five subtopics which are First, Data Publishing and Visualization, for example, Big Query. Second, Batch and Streaming Data, for example, Cloud Dataflow, Cloud Dataproc, Apache Beam, Apache Spark, and Hadoop Ecosystem, Cloud Pub, or Sub, Apache Kafka. Third, Online, Interactive, versus Batch Predictions. Fourth, job automation and orchestration for example cloud composer number three designing a data processing solution it contains seven subtopics which are first choice of infrastructure second system availability and fault tolerance third use of distributed systems fourth capacity planning fifth hybrid cloud and edge computing sixth architecture options for example Message brokers, message queues, middleware, service-oriented architecture, serverless functions. Seventh, at least once, in order, and exactly once, etc., event processing. Number four, migrating data warehousing and data processing. It contains three subtopics which are First, awareness of current state and how to migrate a design to a future state. Second, migrating from on-premises to cloud, data transfer service, Transfer Appliance, Cloud Networking. Third, Validating a Migration. Module 2, Building and Operationalizing Data Processing Systems. Number 1, Building and Operationalizing Storage Systems. It contains three subtopics which are. First, Effective Use of Managed Services, Cloud Bigtable, Cloud Spanner, Cloud SQL, BigQuery, Cloud Storage, Cloud Data Store, Cloud Memory Store. Second, storage costs and performance. Third, life cycle management of data. 
Number 2, Building and Operationalizing Pipelines. It contains five subtopics which are First, Data Cleansing. Second, Batch and Streaming. Third, Transformation. Fourth, Data Acquisition and Import. Fifth, Integrating with New Data Sources. Number 3, Building and Operationalizing Processing Infrastructure. Considerations. It contains three subtopics which are First, Provisioning Resources. Second, Monitoring Pipelines. Third, Adjusting Pipelines. Fourth, Testing and Quality Control. Module 3, Operationalizing Machine Learning Models. Number 1, Leveraging Pre-Built ML Models as a Service. Considerations. It contains three subtopics which are First, ML APIs, for example, Vision API, Speech API. Second, customizing ML APIs, for example, Auto ML Vision, Auto ML Text. Third, conversational experiences, for example, Dialog Flow. Number two, deploying an ML pipeline. Considerations. It contains three subtopics which are First, ingesting appropriate data. Second, retraining of machine learning models, Cloud Machine Learning Engine, BigQuery ML, Kubeflow, Spark ML. Third, continuous evaluation. Number three, choosing the appropriate training and serving infrastructure. Considerations. It contains three subtopics which are First, distributed versus single machine. Second, use of edge compute. Third, hardware accelerators, for example, GPU, TPU. Number four, measuring, monitoring, and troubleshooting machine learning models. Considerations. It contains three subtopics which are First, machine learning terminology, for example, features, labels, models, regression, classification, recommendation, supervised, and unsupervised learning, evaluation metrics. Second, impact of dependencies of machine learning models. Third, common sources of error, for example, assumptions about data. Module 4. Ensuring Solution Quality. Number 1. Designing for Security and Compliance. Considerations. It contains three subtopics which are First, Identity and Access Management, for example, Cloud IAM. Second, Data Security, Encryption, Key Management. Third, Ensuring Privacy, for example, Data Loss Prevention API. Fourth, Legal Compliance, for example, Health Insurance Portability and Accountability Act, Children's Online Privacy Protection Act, FedRAMP, General Data Protection Regulation. Number 2, Ensuring Scalability and Efficiency. Considerations. It contains three subtopics which are First, Building and Running Test Suites. Second, Pipeline Monitoring, for example, Stackdriver. Third, Assessing, Troubleshooting, and Improving Data Representations and Data Processing Infrastructure. Fourth, Resizing and Auto Scaling Resources. Number 3, Ensuring Reliability and Fidelity. Considerations. It contains four subtopics which are First, Performing Data Preparation and Quality Control, for example, Cloud Data Prep. Second, Verification and Monitoring. Third, Planning, Executing, and Stress Testing Data Recovery, Fault Tolerance, Rerunning Fail Jobs, Performing Retrospective Reanalysis. Fourth, Choosing Between Acid, Idempotent, Eventually Consistent Requirements. Number 4, Ensuring Flexibility and Portability. Considerations. It contains three subtopics which are First, Mapping to Current and Future Business Requirements. Second, Designing for Data and Application Portability, for example, Multi-Cloud, Data Residency Requirements. Third, Data Staging, Cataloging, and Discovery, Schedule the Exam. If you are determined enough to go for this exam, and become a certified Google Data Engineer, then it's time to register for the exam, and go ahead for the preparation. Following are the steps to apply for the exam. First, you will need a Web Assessor account. You are supposed to create a one in order to register yourself for the exam. To create, click here. Second, create the account with your personal email address, and not your work address. Third, check the catalog, 
and register for the exam you want to apply for. Fourth, choose the exam center, that is, Criterion Testing Center. Fifth, when you register for an exam, you will need to schedule an exam time at a Criterion Testing Center that is convenient for you. Now we will talk about, retake the exam. For instance, if you don't pass the certification exam, you can take it again after 14 days. Similarly, if you don't pass the second time, you must wait 60 days. Further, if you don't pass the third attempt, you'll have to wait a year before trying again. Above all, payment is required each time you take an exam. Note, trying to sidestep the retake policy by registering under a different name is a violation of the exam terms and conditions and will result in a denied or revoked certification. Exam Day After crossing all the hurdles, comes your exam day. All your hard work is going to take shape. In other words, you are going to get your output in your hand. In order to receive one, you should remember the following points. First, you should arrive before the arrival time at the exam center with valid identity proof, a voter ID card which differs depending upon the location and country. Second, you can just contact the customer care of the testing center to take information about the perquisites of the exam, or check the official certification page. Third, you will be given a locker where you can keep your belongings at the test center. Let us now talk about preparation resources to become a Google Cloud Certified Professional Data Engineer. First, review the exam guide. The exam guide has a complete list of topics and domains that are included in the exam. So, review the exam guide to determine if your skills align with the topics on the exam. This will allow you to have a better understanding of the Google Cloud Certified Professional Data Engineer exam. Second, get started with training program. When it comes to certification exams, there's nothing better than the training programs. These offer the candidates with such deep knowledge and insights of the Google Cloud Platform. Third, data engineering on Google Cloud Platform. This four-day instructor-led class provides participants with a hands-on introduction to designing and building data pipelines on Google Cloud Platform. With a combination of presentations, demos, and hands-on labs, Candidates learn the process of designing a data system. Not to mention, they also learn and build end-to-end -end data pipelines, analyze data and derive insights. This particular course entails everything structured, unstructured, and streaming data. Fourth, don't underestimate the power of hands-on practice. Since this particular exam tests technical skills related to the job profiles. Hence, hands-on experience is the best preparation for the exam. If after training program, candidates feel like having more experience or practice we strongly suggest using the hands-on labs available on quick labs also they are available on the gcp free tier to grade up candidates knowledge and skills fifth google cloud free tier the google cloud free tier provides the candidate with free resources to study google cloud services this becomes all the more enriching for a candidate if they are completely new to the platform and need to learn the basics on the other hand if suppose you're an established customer, and want to experiment with new solutions, the Google Cloud Free Tier has got you covered. Sixth, Google Cloud Essentials. In this introductory level quest, the candidate will get hands-on practice with Google Cloud's fundamental tools and services. Google Cloud Essentials is the recommended first quest for the Google Cloud learner, as this provides the candidate with practical experience that they can apply to their first Google Cloud project. From writing Cloud Shell commands, and marshalling their first virtual machine, to running applications on Kubernetes engine, or with load balancing. 7th, Data Engineering. This advanced level quest is unparalleled amongst the other Quick Labs offerings. The labs are curated to provide the IT professionals hands-on practice with topics, and services that appear in the Google Cloud Certified Professional Data Engineer certification. From BigQuery to Data Prep, to Cloud Composer, and TensorFlow. This quest is composed of specific labs that will put your GCP data engineering knowledge to the test. Not to mention, this will increase candidates' skills and abilities, so they won't require other preparation, as the exam is quite challenging. Therefore, external studying, practice, or background in cloud data engineering is urged. Eighth, additional resources for the professional data engineer in you. When it comes to certification exams like Google Cloud Certified Professional Data Engineer, the more the learning resources, the better will be the outcome. In the same vein, if candidate requires more in-depth knowledge, and wants to critically acknowledge their components of Google Cloud Platform, 
9th, self-evaluation makes you better. And, finally, it's time for self-evaluation. Take it from us, self-evaluation is the last step of your success. The more you're going to practice, it's better for you. Not only does it assist you in understanding the areas, where you lack but also, ensures you're improving your skills as well. So, keep on practicing as many practice tests as much you can. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.